Hi, I'm Kathy Nard. We've lived here for 28 years. Uh, we came from St. Louis, Missouri. My husband got transferred on his job and we had three acres. And my love for flowers just kind of overwhelmed me at that point. And now after 28 years, it, it is a lot, but you know, I still have the same joy every time I see them opening up. I can't wait for different flowers to open up. Uh, the azaleas behind me, um, of course, I don't. you don't have to do much with them, thank goodness. I do try and get all the leaves out of them. Uh, but yeah, this, is, this has been our home and looks like it, it will stay our home for quite a while. But if I could, uh, if I could ever uh, encourage anyone to become a master gardener, I think I'm living proof that you can do it no matter what your age and uh, you will learn a lot and have fun at the same time. Just wanted to thank everybody for clicking in on this video and maybe you'll learn a little bit from my years of gardening. I became a master gardener about six years ago. Just love it every minute. I've learned so much. I'm a city girl so all the people here in this group are uh, teaching me a lot from you know farming that they probably picked up from their parents or grandparents. But I'm going to talk about hostas, clematis, and uh, corabels today. They're three of my favorite perennials because they are so reliable and they're not really a lot of work once you get them going. So here's one of the biggest ones I have right here. And it's called a, a Big Daddy, and it will get much larger. It does get the morning sun, and it does burn a little bit. So my suggestion is try and put as many as you can in the more of a shade, but check when you buy one and see what they're recommending. And I did put in some uh, Russian sage. That's this, and it's just starting. I cut it way back this year. And I'm wanting to get another one to put over here. And then as it grows, it'll come over and give it a little more shade. I learned that from one of the UK professors who was speaking in one of our classes a couple years ago. So that's one of my favorites right there. And have a minute here, you'll see there's several others. Here's one that's just a solid green. Uh, obviously quite different color, more sh chartreuse probably. Um, this is a tiger lily starting to come up. Uh, here, back here we have another one. Again, similar to that one. And I know there's another one in here hiding somewhere. Here it is. And as you'll see, this is probably more of a favorite because it's got the two, two colors. The white and the green and they will all get much bigger obviously it's just the uh, middle of april so there's a lot to, to grow and here's another beautiful hosta again it's in a, a planter and there's several shoots so it would be really easy to you know divide it if you wanted to share it with any friends well, this is one of my clematis again this one blooms a little later and let, I do have a picture of it I believe so let me look here real quick and see what it will eventually look like here's what it will look like okay this is another one of my favorite clematis uh, obviously look at the size of this and this is what's grown already this year again i trim it back because otherwise you have a lot of dead wood uh, i don't trim it back to the ground like some of the other ones but uh, anyway this one here it is it has its first flower open yesterday and i'm gonna say it's called jack manny j-a-c-k-m-a-n-i-i uh, this whole thing will be full of these beautiful purple flowers. I mean, obviously you can see it's reaching for the sun. 
but it's again another favorite at this time of year. This one, uh, again, you can see all the huge buds on it. So they'll be, it'll be blooming soon. One is just now trying to open. But here's a picture of it last year. So you can kind of see the, oops, the wind's starting to pick up. Okay, kind of see the coloring. But yeah, I mean, there's even a bud way down here and here. So, you know, sometimes you kind of have to guide them. Uh, if they're like, you know, if one was starting to come out here, I'd pull it back. But you're going to have to be really gentle because uh, it breaks easily. But, but at the same time, we've had a lot of strong wind. And I'll see it back here, but it doesn't break it, so don't ask me. <laughs> this here, and you can there, the two trellises. It is what's called sweet autumn clematis. And this is a, more of a fall, late uh, August, maybe into September. And, I mean, it is stunning. But you can see I have one, two, three, four trellises. It is so huge that it will fall over onto the steps when it's done. But you can see already, look how early it is, and look at the growth on it. So, uh, but this is probably the most spectacular one as far as, you know, sight, because it is so big. I mean, you don't miss it like some of those that have a little bit smaller flower. So, but uh, uh, if you buy it, Sweet Autumn is the name. Be sure and give it plenty of room. I, I probably would not have planted it here if I'd realized how big it was going to. It becomes more like a, you can see how tall it is, monster shrub actually. And uh, it's very easy just to cut back then once it's all dead. You know, probably early winter is when we do it. And, uh, and then we can just throw it in the burn pile and just, you know, leave a little bit on the ground. And that's all, you know, that's it. It is gorgeous. Uh, I always can't wait for it. I actually one of the other master gardeners, Kelly Canfield, was the one who told me about it. And here we have a uh, another one, another clematis, and this is an old ladder, obviously that we've had for years. We started with bird feeders, and but again, it's just starting. So uh, it's called Crystal. I say Crystal Fountain. And like I said, you know, if you get them, try and get the ones with tags, and it will give the information needed. And since Nikki's so close, you can see Bob and I strung some like fishing line to try and give the clematis vine something to climb up on. And I have cannas all around it, which they do like uh, shade their feet to be shaded a little bit, It'll be a little bit cooler. So this has been working and I know I have several people who want some cannas. So this is where I'll take them because I don't want it to hurt the growth of the clematis. That's by far is my favorite. But these, you can see it, the frost got it the other day, but uh, no, I think they're okay. I think just the leaf that was up got it. So the new leaves are coming up. And of course, they'll be yay tall, so you know it'll give it plenty of shade way back there. Okay. And here is probably the most stunning at this point. The other ones will, but uh, this is an early one. This is called uh, what I say it was Diana's Delight. But look at the different colors, even in it. I mean, and again, we put in the um, fishing line to give it something to adhere to and grow up and this one's doing really well i have the little chair in front of it again to give it that shade that i talked about once before when it gets so hot in the summer there you go we have uh, two different corabels and i may have neglected to say that corabels do shoot up a little flower and we are lucky to have them right here 
They're all basically on this order, uh, a tiny stem, but you'll see how many flowers are gonna open up soon. And uh, these are in planters and they do extremely well. And this is another one over here. This is what I like about it. You get different colors. It's called citronelle. So I guess it reminds you of the candles. <laughs> but I just think they're so pretty. And these will be shooting up some flowers. And all you have to do is, in, you know, uh, either pull them out the dead in early spring or before this even gets this big, you can just take clippers. It will not hurt it. It will still develop into a full plant. Okay, and this is probably going to be the last, but this is a beautiful corbo. We had it in a, a wine uh, barrel, which of course, obviously, it, it went its way. <laughs> so we had this, and Bob, my husband cut it in half. We could barely lift it. It was so heavy and got it in here. But uh, it's called uh, Caramel, C-A-R-A-M-E-L. And it's a uniquely colored, warm, orange, blush uh, leaves. So it, it is beautiful. I mean, it has actually been other colors, this, <laughs> which sounds funny, I know. But see here at one time was the color. But this year it's radiant, I think. It's just gorgeous. Uh, even though this is not the hostas, obviously, or clematis, or corabels, these are called Solomon Seal. And, I mean, they're stunning. And they'll be this way the entire year, except for the little flowers, as you can see. Um, the little flowers are, are, it's perfect time for that. Uh, these will eventually go away, but the stem with the leaves stays that way the entire season. And actually, it's probably the very last thing that goes away. And these little white daisies uh, came from a one seed pack many years ago. I mean, I'm talking like about maybe 25, 20 seven years ago uh and the birds i guess seem to move them around so i have them and you'll see in the next garden you'll see them all over uh, but again to me they're so cheerful and happy looking and i just love them and you know when they're done yes then i have to trim them back but again a little work for the joy of the flower i used to tell my grandchildren when they were little and helping me I'd say we have to clean out this car and because it's this flowers it's its moment to shine <laughs> well, I hope you've learned a little something about my favorites uh, one thing I did forget to tell you is you can put uh, pine needles underneath the uh, hostas and that will keep your snails from getting up on them and chewing little holes in your leaves sorry about that I forgot just I'm old you just have to <laughs> I, I, I come out with things sooner or later, but anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this, and I, I hope you have as much delight with these flowers as I do. Thank you.